introduce you to Nina. Nina is eight years old. She loves reading and writing, but she struggles in math. She's learning coding in school, but she thinks it's for boys. But why is that? Because she's told at, every, at a very young age that tech is not for her. For example, at school, the after-school robotics class she has is 95% boys. And at play, when she goes to the toy store and she looks at the coding robots, they're all based on masculine military vehicles or anonymous droids. Nina is my daughter. And as a mother, I wanted to find a way to inspire her. So I took matters into my own hands, and I bought a build-it-yourself coding robot. One evening, we went home, settled down at the kitchen table, and tried to build this robot. Well, it was a complete and utter failure. She hated building it, she hated the computer interface, and I was out $250. There had to be another way, I thought. So I started investigating. I walked into her room, and I looked around. It was feminine and girly and filled to the brim with sparkly stuffed animals. Hmm, interesting, I thought, taking notes. I also found her dollhouse. This dollhouse gave her hours and hours of creative playtime and filled, filled her mind with stories, imagination, and role-playing. I also found plenty of the B word, and plenty of them. Funny thing is that some of her old Barbies were my old Barbies, and I started looking at them going, oh, I missed this one. Oh, you know, memories started flooding in, and I was thinking, I love those. As I gazed at them, I began to think about why dolls are important and what role they play in childhood development, and in fact, my own development. At the time, I was a director of a learning corporation, and much of my work was using play therapy to counter issues such as bullying and absenteeism with hard-of-hearing students. So was this the key, I asked? I decided to do some desk research, and here's what I found. Siri-like. I found an article about Plagona. Plagona is the Barbie doll of ancient Greece. And like today's Barbie, she has articulated limbs, and you can change her clothes. Pretty advanced for 7th century BC. Then I probably found the oldest and ugliest doll I've ever seen. <laughs> this was found in a Bronze Age child's grave, dating it back to 3000 BC. Old, that's 4,500 years ago. It seemed to me that all the negative hype about doll playing and Barbies was so wrong when considering that girls have been playing with dolls for thousands of years. Today, one billion Barbies are sold worldwide in 150 countries, and three Barbies are sold every second. The problem is, are we asking girls to make a choice? Here we have three lovely little girls. They love to play basketball, they love to play baseball, but they also like to dress like princesses. Why do they have to make a choice, was my question. My research took me even deeper. And I found that Nina was not alone. Actually, she was part of a worldwide epidemic. Studies show that by age 13, 65% of girls lose interest in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. We only have 29% of tech jobs going to women, and less than 17% of tech leadership roles are taken by women. This was serious. It seemed like the time is right. Here we have 2.8 million STEM jobs going unfulfilled, and yet 7% of STEM degrees are being awarded to women. Why? Schools are requiring coding as part of core curriculum. There's this worldwide push to bridge the gender gap. It began, I began to think about it, and, uh, and then I thought about it also personally. Why do we need more women and diversity in tech? It was funny, at the time, Apple had just launched this health kit, and I was looking forward to downloading it and, and using it. What I found is that they actually forgot to track women's menstruation, and they had to rescind the app. In addition, a recent news report revealed that artificial intelligence in self-driving cars do not appear to recognize people of color. So great, 
we're going to get hit by cars now. Um, <laughs> watch out for those self-driving cars. And I live in California where they're everywhere. And now I'm like, whoop. <laughs> they don't see me for some reason. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and this is why, this is why we need diversity and inclusion, because if we're not part of the team that's building these apps, if we're not part of the team that's building this technology, then we're going to be left out and possibly run over. So <laughs> this is why I created the world's first coding robot aimed at girls. It's the only coding robot focused on inclusivity and diversity. Apparently, others felt that I was on the right track, um, because I was approved, approved, um, approved to be on Shark Tank, appear on the TV show, and I pitched my company to both Richard Branson and uh, received an investment from Damon John. Just for your information, 40,000 companies apply each year, and only 100 are accepted. So it's a pretty big honor to be, to be chosen. Thank you. Thank you. We got the pleasure of teaching Richard Branson to code, believe it or not, even though he's a media mogul, didn't know how. <laughs> so we taught him how, and um, he probably walked away being able to make an app if, or two if he wants to. But Smart Girls is more than just a doll and a robot. It was very important for us to understand the way that girls learn and their preferred play patterns. For example, we can see very clearly that there's a difference between men and women and the way that we learn. So for example, girls have a smaller parietal lobe, girls and women for that matter, and this means that we have weaknesses in spatial reasoning, map reading, and building. But it also means that we have amazing strengths. We're 10 times faster than men because we have 10 times more connectivity and a larger hippocampus it means that language, communication, reading, writing, and memory will knock the socks of those boys, right? So how do we sort of balance these two, the weakness and the strength? Here you can see this is affecting us on a day-to-day -day basis. Here's a New York Times bestseller list. Women can't read maps. Does anyone in this room agree with me? Many of you do, I'm sure. <laughs> or maybe you won't admit to it. I didn't admit to it, actually, for a long time. And I couldn't understand it. I was like, why is this taking me so long? Is there something wrong? And, I know why, because it's my parietal lobe. I've gotten a good excuse now. Um, another argument that my husband and I have had for years is, you know, packing up the car. Why is it that when I pack up the car, it looks like this, and when my husband does it, it looks like, you know, a, an advanced Lego um, <laughs> building? Don't know. I'm sure some of you have also experienced this as well. Here's a clinical test that discerns whether or not you have spatial reasoning skills or not. You can take this test with me. Here, you need to be able to rotate this widget in your mind to the correct direction. Just so you know, 90% of women fail this test, and the opposite for men. The answer is B if you're trying to take the test. I know, I said C. <laughs> OK. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> several studies show that adding stories and music also improve math retention for girls and minorities, for that matter. So here we, did a, we, did, we looked at a study where we added story and geometry together compared to control exercises, and we found an amazing leap of 57% of girls' retention just by adding the story. Amazing. So all we have to do is some small tweaks here and there, and we can actually encourage girls in math, coding, computer science, technology. What's really important for us is looking at the evidence and saying, how do we link the research that's out there and the curriculum that we've created? So for example, we have five dolls who represent diverse areas of STEM who are also role models. So one of our characters, Zara, she's our bestseller. She's African-American, and she's a kick-ass <laughs> coding genius. Um, we have Maria. She's Hispanic, and she's a mathematician. We have Jen. She's, a, she's an engineer. We have Yoon, she's a biologist. All of these stories create role models for the girls that we're trying to inspire. We also make sure that every child gets, gets to code by rotating roles in our assignments. And we have a new dance app that allows children to code to music and make choreography. And we make sure that we, have, we don't have winners and losers by hosting 
by hosting talent shows instead of traditional robotics competitions, which I always felt was sort of alienating to girls because they felt, oh, I lost. You know, here, everyone's a winner, everyone has talent. What happened to Nina? Fast forward six years, and I'm happy to say that Nina did find the joy of math and is taking advanced courses in biology. Yay. Here is a picture of her at the NASA space camp. And for smart girls, we are proud to have educated more than 30,000 girls worldwide in coding and computer science. Thank you, and I hope you join us to make all girls smart girls. Thank you.